Hello, this is Paul from QuickenMobile.com and I am here in beautiful Dunedin, Florida with Toby and the world's greatest motorized walker, the Wheelator. And in the course of this video, I am going to demonstrate and show and tell exactly why the Wheelator is the world's greatest motorized walker. And if we can say the word hybrid, we definitely have a winner. So before we get into this video, presuming that you like what you hear or presuming that you've already watched several other videos about the Wheelator, you can find it on quickandmobile.com. You can also give us a telephone call. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the features of this actual Wheelator here. Now, if we're looking at walkers, we can kind of compare apples to apples, but this is a motorized assistive device or assistive walking device. Now, just like any other rollator, we'll point out some of the very basic features. We have a braking system, so we do have handbrakes. We can push the handbrakes. We can see that that locks the rear wheels up. We can push the handle brakes down. That provides a lock on the rear wheels as well. And we can see that the rear wheels, they actually have an adjustable kind of tension rod here, an adjustable uh, tension, so you can make the brakes kind of bite into the wheel more, or you can make them less sensitive. Now, while we're on the topic and kind of looking down here, these wheels are not normal wheels. They're, they're brushless electromagnetic motors kind of hiding out in here in these two hubs, 250 watt motors, two 250 watt motors. And we've got some measurements here that we'll take and I kind of want to point out that these wheels are about eight inches if we're basically looking kind of here to here and the tread area is about an inch and a half thick so that by itself is a lot more substantial than a regular Walker and if we look at the front wheel too, we basically have some pretty heavy-duty casters here. Look at those turn We've Got aircraft grade aluminum and those hold up to 250 pounds Just like the back wheel you kind of see how we've got these holes drilled in, in the tires here We have no inner tube. So they're flat free tires and We we have the holes drilled in those polyurethane for one purpose and that is to make the device lighter tell you in just a second how much this device weighs and we have nine inches okay so these are nine inches front wheels are just a little bit bigger than the back wheels and basically we have about an inch and a half of thickness now there's one thing that I'll go over with this 32 pound device that's right it weighs just 32 pounds if we basically take the battery and the brain off which is basically the kind of the thinking mechanism of this device and it does fold and it does go in a car and it is FAA travel approved and compliant. We'll show you that in a little bit. But I wanted to kind of continue talking about the wheels here. If, if you take a look at just about any other kind of walker or rollator, you're going to see wheels in many ways that are kind of rounded out. Okay. Now, rounding the wheel out, you have less surface tension because they're rounded, they're thin, they have a lot less material. Where you actually have a lot more surface tension here, you have a lot more grip. And if we kind of take a look back here, same thing, you've got a good amount of surface tension here, and this is a solid polyurethane wheel. So for using a walker, and look at the kind of the grip and the tread on that. It's a lot more substantial than a regular walker would be, because I've seen some regular walkers that have the thinnest of the thin wheels. Okay, so let's kind of take a look kind of up the device here. We'll notice a couple things underneath the device. Basically, first and foremost, we have a cable holder. So we have a lot of cables and it gives you the ability to organize cables. If you do currently or frequently remove the, the basket, which has the battery in it, which has the brain in it. And of course, we do have a seat belt here as well. So the seat belt is useful if you're, if you're in a situation where you are using this as a wheelchair or you're being transported and, and you kind of want to be a little bit more secure. Now, of course, you can see that just like any great walker, I do have the ability to, to sit down and to, to relax. 
I am about six feet and I weigh about 220 pounds right now, maybe a hair over 220. And we can kind of see here that, well, I had no problem sitting. It was very comfortable, it was very easy for me to sit. But we take a look really at the handlebars, they're right at my hips. And I know right now there's probably people wondering about the stats. So this is completely adjustable device. Now, I do wanna take a few measurements here just to kind of point things out before we actually get into the electronics of this device and how specifically the electronics work. So we have 18 inches of width with the seat. The padded part of the seat we have about 12 and a half inches long, okay? So the space in between the handlebars is actually pretty relevant. So we have about, I'm gonna go outside to outside, we have right around 20 inches, okay? So give or take a little bit because you can see the shape of this. And while I'm here, we're looking at the rear joystick and I also wanna point out some of the inherent safety features that you have with this device, the reflective materials on the back of both of the actual handles here. And I'll, I'll give you a measurement of the handles to the ground, but first let's take a look at some of the adjustments here. So these handles, I'll put this down to the lowest point. Now keep in mind, okay, there's a joystick right there. There's a joystick right there. I explained that this is a hybrid device and it is the world's greatest walker as far as I'm concerned because it does have electronic assistance. It helps prevent falls when you are traveling down a hill and it helps you climb a hill. So we'll get into that in just a little bit. I'm gonna turn these off, but I did before we got too far into actually taking some measurements, which measurements are super important for people I did want to make certain that I pointed those two things out. So let's take a look at really how tall this is off the ground. In the lowest setting, this handle is about 33 inches, the top of the handle. And of course, I know that somebody is going to ask how long the handle is. There's always measurements that people ask. We have about four inches of actual hand space on the handle itself and we have the ability to adjust it in increments. So I'm gonna bring this up in an increment. So that was about 33 inches of height. And basically if we bring this up to the increments, we have what? We have about 30, 34. So we have about one inch increments. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five. And let's take a look. Let's take a look at the top of the handle here, all the way up. And we are looking at about 38, okay? So 38 inches high. Now this would be too high for me because you kind of see my arms are, are bending a pretty substantial amount and it's above kind of my hip socket. I kind of like to have this right around my hip socket. That gives me the most ease the most comfort. So I'll kind of adjust these up a little bit. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show how some of the assistive technology on this device works, but after we fold it up. So you can see that this folds up. It is FAA airline travel compliant. Without the batteries, it weighs just 32 pounds. It functions on one battery. The operational weight is right around 39 pounds, give or take about a pound, depending on if you have both batteries here, depending on if you have just one battery and you, you don't care to keep the extra battery in the basket, or depending on what kind of stuff you have in the basket. So it's very lightweight and it does fold up and it does fit in the back of the car. Now, I'm going to turn this back joystick on. And if we take a look, let's take a look actually at the joystick itself. We have a thumb button right here just a button, you can see, and we have actually the power button, and we basically have the mode that's going to switch the gears, and we have forward and back. So I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to basically see two zeros, and then I'm going to see a zero one. Now, what that does, I've got zero one, zero two, zero three. That's going to put resistance in these wheels. So I can move the device, but it takes me a good amount of effort 
to move the device. So you can see if I pushed it, you can kind of see the wheels lock up a little bit. I'm going to push it real quick. Wheels locked up. So I've made videos and you can really see this, and this is just more of a description right here, but I've made a lot of videos where we've been going up hills, where we've been going down hills, where we've taken it on grass, gravel, we're inside, we're just explaining the device right now. So I would encourage you to please like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoy understanding more about this device, because that way you're going to be presented with a lot more content and a lot more information about the Wheelator. And of course, you can also visit quickandmobile.com to learn all about the Wheelator. Okay, so if we're kind of going on a walk here, I'm, I'm pushing this, it's, it's resisting, and if the device goes forward really quickly, it kind of locks up and it beeps. So let's take a look at the joystick, and it takes a few minutes or a couple few seconds, I should say, not a few minutes, a few seconds to unlock. So I'm going to go forward and I'm going to simulate a fall. See, EE -E beeps, it locks, and it provides stability. So that's really important. Now, if I want less resistance on this device, this M, I'm going to go to two. So two, still going to give me resistance, but it's going to let me walk a little bit faster same thing backwards, I can't pull it, so I have resistance in the motors. It's just not letting the device run away with gravity. Regular walker, regular rollator, it's going to run away with gravity. The second that you go down a hill, you've got to stabilize the device and kind of hold the device back up the hill, backing the device back up the hill. And the same thing going up a hill. You've got to push the device up the hill. So how do we deal with that? We've got another setting here that still gives you resistance. And the resistance that you're going to get in that setting is the lowest amount of resistance. So you could actually walk the fastest. And then if we press this one more time, we go to the C. C1, C2, C3. Slowest to fastest. C1 is the slowest. Now, if I press down on this thumb pad, look what happens. That propels the device forward. And I can just use one finger to operate it. Now, if I use my manual resistance here, this is really neat. I'm walking with the device manually as well, okay? So I don't have any resistance here. I can maneuver the device as much as I want to maneuver the device, but when I decide that I want assistance, I just have to press that thumb pad down. If I want to go faster, we're going to press that again. Look what it does. It goes to C2, okay? so. Went from C1 to C2. I'm going to press it again. It's going to go the fastest, C3. So that's going to be a really brisk walk. Now, I know that somebody's going to ask about backing up. Okay, what about the backup? So let's take a look real, real quick here at these two arrows right here, the forward and the back arrow. I can jumble reverse this. Mode. See, it, it said reverse mode. Reverse mode. It's telling me directly that I have the reverse mode. And I'm going to go ahead and at this point, shut this off. Because I, I wanted to kind of demonstrate here what the rear joystick does and really some of the safety features of this device. Now, I know that everybody is wondering right now, at this point in time, you know, I've probably seen a fair amount of, of walkers. I go out to the restaurant, I see some really fancy walkers. I see walkers that people can sit down in, kind of like this one, where they can take a rest and sit down. I see walkers with big wheels, I see walkers with small wheels, I see walkers with handlebars up here where I can kind of hold myself up with my elbows, but I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen a walker with a joystick on the back and a joystick on the front. So if, you, if you've guessed that this is a hybrid device, you've absolutely guessed correctly. Before I turn this into a wheelchair, I just kind of want to do a little bit of a well, let's just do some real talk here. This device, as much as I would love everybody to have one, there are certain people that are really, really suited for this device, and there are certain people that should not get this device. For example, if you are using a walker and you love the idea that I can have something that basically gives me the ability to drive up, that resists, that kind of helps me prevent falling, 
that it has a lot of inherent safety features and I'm going to use it as a walker. About 70% of the time I'm going to be walking. This is the best possible device you could get. There is nothing even close to it at the time of this video. Nothing even close. Now, if you are a wheelchair user, on the other hand, let's take a look here. I have the ability to do all sorts of adjustments here. I have the articulating backrest that will allow me to move and articulate the backrest without adjusting the handles up and down. So if I was a caregiver, for example, and I had somebody that wanted to be in a wheelchair, or we got a little bit tired and we're not using the walker anymore, we see those little, those little kind of clamp right there. I can kind of open this and snap these footrests directly into place, and I can lift the armrests over. So what I'm doing is I'm watching right in front of my face this become an actual portable motorized FAA travel compliant wheelchair. And I have the ability to flip up the footrests and I have the ability to adjust. We kind of see here, there's a toolkit that comes with this and we can adjust the actual foot plates to go higher up. So we have a lot of areas of adjustability here and I'll just measure from the front of the pad to the front of the footrest. We have basically 22 inches. And if we're looking at how much space do we have just across the footrest, we look at 17 inches right here, okay? And of course these flip up. So I'll open the basket up before I actually demo this as a wheelchair and we'll take a look here. I have a battery that's right here. You can kind of see the battery, two batteries. So there's one battery connected to the device, and then there's another battery that we give you as a spare battery. And of course, you can see that these are lithium ion batteries, and they have all of the information printed directly on the battery. So when you're traveling, this is all you would need to really present. And of course, I always suggest to people to call the airline before you actually make reservations, before you book a trip. But isn't it refreshing? Because at this day and age, the cost of lithium ion batteries is, is pretty pricey. And the concept that we actually give you two batteries is amazing. Now, you can see that this is moving. And I know the question that I'm gonna get. So if I basically got in the chair by myself here and stabilizing it, how do we best get in the chair? Okay. That was fine, that didn't go back too far. Okay, I can put my legs here, but then I have another issue. I have to kind of reach around and undo the brake. So that's not really good for a lot of people. And I can turn the joystick on and let's take a look at this joystick real quick. I have a horn here. I have the ability to turn the speed down. One, two, five. I'm gonna go just under five miles per hour with this device. And I have the ability to really kind of go in any direction as a wheelchair. So I can go backwards, I can go forwards, I can go left, I can go right, it doesn't really matter. But I think that the point that we were basically getting at earlier on is how are we going to stabilize this device so I can get in the device if I'm by myself. Now I do wanna point out again, Okay, and, and I think that this is a really important thing to point out. If, if you're maybe able to walk about 50 yards and you get tired and you're looking to go on outings on a consistent basis, there's one of two ways that I would, that I would handle a device like this. I would get this and I would use it as my walker and wheelchair if I'm in an absolute pinch or I would just get a lightweight foldable wheelchair. So this is really best designed because, and I'll back up and I'll complete that thought. The reason that I wouldn't just get a lightweight folding wheelchair directly from the start is because a lightweight folding wheelchair is designed for exactly that. It's ergonomically designed to be a lightweight folding wheelchair. The wheelchairs that we have on quickandmobile.com 
they all fold. They're all FAA travel compliant. They're all lightweight. We even have carbon fiber wheelchairs. And if you're in the type of situation, and I, know, I, and I know this is tough, I know it's tough. If you're in the type of situation where we're, we're looking at, I really want to be walking, but I'm, if I tell myself the truth, if I walk 50 yards, it folds up all the way behind the chair. If I walk 50 yards, I'm annihilated. You, this, this situation is something that you should really reconsider. I know it's attractive. I know you probably want one. I know you probably want one right away because you want to get moving and get walking and have all the assistive technology and the health. But the reality of the situation, the message for you, if you're watching this right now, start looking at motorized power wheelchairs. It, you will be so much happier. And of course, you can get this as a secondary device and be super happy when you're having good days and you feel that maybe I was able to make it 100 yards before I got tired. Okay, so let's get back to the original topic that I was talking about. How do we stabilize the device so I can sit in the device? I'm just going to press the power on and I am going to make certain that I'm not in the C1, C2, C3. I'm going to just get in 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. Because if I take a look at what happens here when I try to push the device back, look what happens. It's, it's locked up. It's not allowing me to push it back. So I can move it forward slowly with one hand. when I'm behind it pushing. So we can see some of the safety measures that have been done with this device. So if I'm here pushing, locks. So I can more comfortably, more confidently, sit down and flip the handles down and turn this on and use this as a foldable, portable, motorized wheelchair. So let's take a look at a couple of the other things here that we can do. And the joystick is, is a removable joystick. We have the ability to not just remove the joystick, but to adjust the joystick as well. This is a really unique feature because some people are petite. And some people have longer, longer forearms. Some people don't want to feel crowded. So to me, this is a more comfortable feel or look to the chair because I have pretty long arms actually. So if I didn't have such long arms, and if I wanted the joystick knob much closer to me, I could. And I know that somebody's gonna ask about the measurement for both situations and scenarios. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you the measurement of the actual armrest from the top of the ground. So we take a look kinda of here at this support bar. That's what I would really consider to be the back of the device. We have about 16 inches. And if I am going to bring this all the way forward and yes it does actually go onto the left arm as well I can easily go either side kind of see right here on the left arm just real quick I know I'm going a little bit off topic but we have the ability to put the joystick there and we had 16 inches now we have about 18 inches so it gives you a couple inches of a difference from the actual knob to the back of the chair there and we'll go ahead and put this away and we'll just look at the actual pad itself. Pad itself here, we have about nine and a half inches and we have about two inches of width and it is very comfortable, okay? So it's comfortable and it's the material that's not just gonna break apart immediately. It's gonna last for a while, which is, which is quite nice. And of course, how high are the armrests from the ground? That's where we're looking at about 33 inches. And we're looking at how high is the seat from the ground. We're looking at about 20 and a half inches. So these are all some really important measurements. And as you can kind of see, this device really is, like I said, it's the world's greatest walker because I can be using it just like this. It looks like a wheelchair, but it is actually serving as a walker. And if I don't want to use it as a wheelchair, and I just want to sit down and relax, I can very easily do that. I can very easily lift this pad up. It's very simple just to adjust these. And I, I have a completely adjustable back pad. And of course, if I even wanted to lower the handles, I can do that. So the last thing that I'll go over with this device is how to charge the device. So we take a look at the joystick. We have a charging port directly on the front of the joystick. And if we take a look at the charger here, we basically have 
standardized charger that comes with the device. You just very simply plug the charger in and you are looking probably at about a good, maybe charging in as little as about two hours. First time you get it, you wanna charge it for a good eight hours. Now, I don't know if there's anything else that I missed. If there is, you can absolutely leave it in the comments in the, in the question section. But I really just wanted to show you what the Wheelator is. And to me, it is absolutely the world's greatest walker because it is motorized, it is a hybrid, it will help you with the anti-fall technology, completely adjustable, lightweight, and it has features galore. So I really appreciate watching. I would like to share this with as many people as possible. It's available currently in the United States of America, and we will answer any of your questions. If you just visit quickenmobile.com and you can navigate directly to the page with the Wheelator. Thank you so much for watching.